That's and that's something that that to me is the biggest part of his game. He needs to work on. Is, is, it seems like he throws a lot of silly interceptions. Yeah. So uh, I think if he could just get a handle on that, and every any any and every quarterback, any and every quarterback needs to limit interceptions and just to to like you said, keep a cool head. And if you're going if you're going to throw a ball, just throw it away. I mean, I I, I watched a lot of football this weekend. I, mm-hmm. I I actually started a started a new job at CBS Sports where where I'm watching football. Um, but some of the interceptions that I've seen this weekend are just. You wonder what yeah, is the yeah. quarterback thinking? I mean, I saw the the Virginia Tech game, Virginia Tech Georgia Tech, where the Virginia Tech quarterback just basically gave the game away because he threw two stupid interceptions. Hmm. It, was, it just like floated the ball up into into the into the secondary. It's like, what are you doing? Throw the ball out of bounds. Throw it into the ground. Throw it anywhere. But don't do what you just did, and he cost his team a game. So and and you know, yesterday uh, uh, I was watching uh, Dallas. Romo threw a pick six, but the, the the Cowboys still managed to come back to win. But it was, I mean, just you wonder sometimes, what, what are they thinking? What are they doing? And, you know, that, that's the biggest thing. You, you know, avoid inter- well, any that quarterback. Comes down to, like you said, it comes down to game management. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, you're looking to make a play, but by the same token, you're looking not to make a bad play. It's, you know, and not, not all the bad, quarterbacks. The bad are mistake. All, yeah. And, you don't uh, want to make bad, the bad uh, mistake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're listening to From the Press Box. I'm Rob Leonard joining me, as always, is Tim Leonard, our special co host. We're we taking another break. Our co host. a lot of today. breaks in this show. For well, a show we, that we, has we, no breaks, you have well, a lot of breaks. We, we, you know, we have to remind people where we are and stuff. And our co host today, special co host, is our good friend Neil Macchio joining us. Talking sports. If you have a comment or a suggestion, 516 572 7440. 12 noon, Motor Mouth Radio. All they do is talk about cars. Every day, they call each other on the phone, let's talk about cars. And then they get this one little hour of slab, but they're actually on the air sharing it with everyone else. You know, Ray Guarino and, and Chris Switzer, they're the hosts. They come in here about 11 o'clock. They're talking cars the first hour here. And then they go on the air at 12. They do a whole hour show there where you can call in with any questions or comments. And then at 1 o'clock, they continue the conversation in the parking lot. They talk more about cars. That's all they talk about is automobiles. I don't get it. That's why they do the show. Motor Mouth Radio, Thursday and Sunday at 12 noon, right here on 90.3 WHPC. The Firehouse Plaza Art Gallery is pleased to open the 2014 and 15 exhibition schedule with the current event titled Elevate, Thursday, October 9th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Curated by Art Department faculty member Nathan Wasserbauer, the exhibition features the works of Carolyn Salas, Rachel Michael Weiss, and Monica Zarzekna. For the first time, the NCC Art Gallery has expanded the confines of the art gallery onto the patio outside the gallery. For further information, contact Lynn Rossi at 516-572-7162 or email lynn.rossi at ncc.edu. The gallery would like to thank NCC Vice President Joe Mascarella and Vivian King for making this event possible. This message was brought to you by WHPC 90.3, the radio voice of Nassau Community College, streaming at ncc.edu slash WHPC. You're listening to From the Press Box right here on 90.3 FM, WHPC. I'm Rob Leonard, Tim Leonard's cross, cross from me, and then our good friend Neil Macho is joining us today, <laughs> also across from me. I'm across from you too. Yeah, it's it's a so triangle. Big triangle, yes. triangle, yeah. It's, I don't know. I'm just. It's like I'm, when it's like when the cops uh, now we're try to track down a cell phone. We're triangulating. Now yeah. we're getting into geometry. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, we're all in the same room. I guess that's the best way to, you know, not talking to each other through the glass. And you know, you know, also in the tradition of Big Ed, our good friend Ed Newlands, there's no Jack and Coke next to us, <laughs> unfortunately. You know, Same. <laughs> <laughs> that was the beauty thing for those. Uh, we, Neil and I used to work with Big Ed, who does a show here, Good Gold, every Thursday at twelve oh one, as uh, opposed to Bad Gold. And he you know, he had a radio <laughs> station true. in his basement. So in a radio station in your basement, on, on it was an internet station. You don't have to follow FCC rules. You know, you keep you don't not supposed to have alcohol nearby. Right. It's the only radio station with a mini bar. Yeah. So you know, every week you I, know, I do want to point out it was his basement, not his mom's basement. Yeah. And so Big Ed would have to get the Jack and Coke out, and you know, by the end of the night he'd be flying, man. <laughs> but we don't. Ha- we can't do that here, unfortunately. You know, unf- you know, it'd be yeah, nice. To, we have to nice, drive, so it'd be nice to have the Jack and Coke uh, to in the show. That's where the arguments would start flowing. In honor of Big Ed. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Big Ed, Thursday is 12.01 right here at WHPC. 12.01. 12.01 a.m., yes. Not 12.00.59. No, because people, people, like I said, 
Or if you say 11.59 Wednesday, you know, that's even better. There you go. There you go. Okay, what else? We're running out of time. What else? Yeah, we are we're running, running out of time. We've got about so, 10 minutes. Neil, pick a topic. Well, we've got two controversial topics. Okay, give, give them to us. Um, first of all, why is Ray Lewis commenting on Ray Rice's situation? Because That's he, the question that I have. You comment about what you know. <laughs> and Ray, Ray, Lewis, Ray Lewis knows crim- criminal activity. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've heard this all secondhand. I didn't see the comments, but... The fact that Ray Lewis is commenting on anybody's well, morality that's what I'm or why, why would you, why would you I, is I mean that and that's the problem with ESPN hiring Ray Lewis I is because you're words, going to run into situations like Lewis. this. Shut up, no comment. Right, well, that's know. what he should be saying. Yeah. Either that, or he, he he should tell the people at ESPN. Look, I don't I don't want to be your right. guy on this. Don't even put me in that. Situation. Bring yeah. Don't don't put me on camera exactly. because I mean the hypocrisy is unbelievable. I mean, first of all, I mean you're, you're having Ray Lewis comment on this stuff like he was a good citizen. And, I mean, arguably or allegedly, whichever word, you know, he was involved in a murder. Allegedly. Somebody died the night that he was in the vicinity mm. of his friends, whatever. I don't know the situation, but allegedly Ray Lewis was involved in the murder of another human being. So to have him commenting on any of the current NFL I don't know, scandals, for lack of a better word, is is just it's preposterous mm-hmm. because I mean mm-hmm. unless unless he's going to tell the the viewers how the football players how how NFL players are going to somehow beat the rap on this because that's that's what he's an expert. Well, on. That's what I was thinking. Unless you're going to give you know Ray Rice some good legal advice, <laughs> yeah. get the heck out of here's my lawyer. Because obviously him. he's got a good lawyer. Yeah, Here, here's, here's <laughs> so, my guy. You need right. to call him. That's enough. But I mean, it's it it really. We get ourselves in trouble. But but, you know, ESPN (laughs) thing about they they (laughs) like that because it gives them the the publicity they like, and this is sometimes where ESPN loses it a little bit, a lot. I mean, this was just it it was a bad hire. But but Ray Lewis, you think he would say, you know, maybe he tried. Maybe he said, well, I really don't want to talk. But ESPN said, no, this is why you're here. You know. But it's it's absolutely. I'm sure if Ray Lewis didn't want to do something, he wouldn't do it. It's absolutely cringeworthy to hear Ray Lewis. Discussing whether and whether that's whether it's Ray Rice, mm-hmm. whether it is uh, Hardy's situation, the, the guy from the Panthers, whether it's Ray McDonald from the Forty, anybody who's been arrested for any sort of mm-hmm. abuse, beating, you know, even Adrian Peterson. I mean, it's a, it's a different right. situation, but it's there's still a, an, an assault there. Ray Ray Lewis is not the guy who should be commenting. Well, not at I'm all. I'm going to give you a good segue here because. We love you know, we're talking about the NFL, and everybody thinks there's a culture problem with the NFL, that it, you know, it kind of leads to violence and stuff like that. But it actually starts on the collegiate level. And that brings me to Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston. All right. This kid just doesn't get it. No. He does not get it. And you'd, you would think that he would. I mean, I, I hate to say it because I, I really don't like to talk about college, or, or, although it's kind of it's going to sound strange. I don't like to talk about college athletes in terms of their intelligence because I still think they are developing well, human right. beings. They're going through the maturation process. Yes. So, you know, you, you, but, you tend to give them a pass, but... Right, yeah, I but mean, but Jameis Winston seems this kid has got a free like, pass on a lot of things. He, I, I, I hate to say it, but he really does seem stupid because he doesn't get it. And <laughs> no. and you would think no. a kid who has been exposed <laughs> to so much already in his young life would have a clue, mm-hmm. and instead he just seems to really have this, you know, this entitled athlete aspect. Or well, that's ju- what it is. That's it, the culture that that leads where, to what goes on in the NFL, yeah, where I can do anything and I'm going to get away with it. I mean, you know, obviously. You know, last year there was the the whole situation where you know he was uh, supposedly stole crab legs from a supermarket down down in, mm-hmm. in in Florida. Before that was was the the uh, allegations of, of a sexual assault. It's just and now it's it's you know whatever whatever he did or said. First of all, this, this is something somebody has to explain this to me. First of all, how does he get suspended for With half a half. game? One half. He gets but suspended. then it was it's he suspended for the full game. But then. How many shots did they show of him in full uniform? Right. Well, he what are wasn't you doing? supposed to. A, um, what are you doing on the sideline if you're suspended? B, what are you doing in full uniform? Like, if somebody right. gets hurt, you're going in. Well, this is where, <sighs> see, the school screws this up. because, And first of all, you know, I heard another radio show this morning defending his actions. Like, oh, he's on the field warming up. You know, maybe it was the equipment manager. You know <laughs> There's what? no defending his actions. You want the true answer? None. Go to your coach. Yeah. Coach tells you you're not playing. You get off the side, get the uniform off. Yeah. That's it. Get that the uniform simple. off. Exactly. You know, put on, put on, put on a, a sweat jacket or a sweatshirt, a cap, 
And, you know, what do you, you say? Know, oh, if oh, you coach, want to be the there. equipment manager left my jersey there, so I thought I was playing today. Well, what kind of, what kind of excuse is that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, idiotic. <laughs> Go to Fisher. Look, what's the deal? Am I playing today or not? No. Yeah. All right, no. goodbye. You want to go? Yeah. Do you yeah think- Jimbo, Jimbo should have told him either go up to the press box or make sure that you're dressed. I'm sure Jimbo had the answer. Sure. If, well, you know, then Jimbo screwed up. Jimbo needs to be held accountable then because there's there's no he. First of all, I mean, if he's suspended, he shouldn't even be on the sideline in the first place. But if what? you're gonna if you're gonna be stupid and have him on the sideline, don't have him in shoulder pads. Well, don't and, have and him in his game jersey. That goes to the rule where you know what. There shouldn't be this one half. What are you going to break it down? Oh, you're suspended for two possessions. Come on. It's either a game or not a game. You don't give me that half thing. Penn State did the same thing last year, I remember, because it was a Syracuse-Penn State game. I went to Syracuse. So, Ooh. first half, their best player was suspended. Second half, he comes out, and he's getting the ball, and all of a sudden, they got 30 points on the board. I've always wondered about that, because if you suspend a guy for a half, does he does he does he have to stay outside the stadium until halftime and then get dressed real quick and then get into the game or like is what like, is that a half is that like but a, that's what creates this type of situation that's my it's point so stupid just he's gone for the game it, or he's not it, yeah. gone for the no, game it's, it's is, that like the, is that like a, like in hockey where you know, you get a five minute penalty or something or no this like, is this is because of stupid like if, coaches if you cursed on the air you wouldn't be able to start the show until like the forty minute mark yeah oh. like I would have I would I would be hosting the show by myself for yeah. for forty minutes or thirty minutes and then after after we went to break at thirty minutes, that you'd come on and and, and of course you would have better radio suspension. then would have been no and then people more, would stop listening I, I doubt that <laughs> now 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 speaking of this guy Jameson does the NFL now with their new sensitivity training that everyone's going to be going through do they um, not uh, draft this guy no, well I mean right. he's only a sophomore so I mean well, that all remains to be yeah, seen he'll he'll get drafted somewhere I mean I, I don't but let's it, say he continues his stupidity you know. Yeah. I, I, it, it, it would definitely hurt his stock because he is still only a sophomore. Yeah, he's only he's a freshman last year, redshirt freshman last year. Wow. So, so he, he's not going to go four years. Uh, no, I, I doubt he no will. Way. But he's he's also a pretty good baseball player too. That's I mean, right. That's but right. and he and he got suspended from the baseball team this year too. <laughs> but he, I mean, this, he's he's a kid. He, you look at him and he looks. He just looks like one of these kids. Like, you know, good old Southern boy, you know, like just like a kind of guy you'd like to kind of hang out with or whatever. But then you start to realize he makes a lot of really dumb decisions. He does. And he puts himself in a lot of situations well, where's that he coach? should be looking out coach? for. Why is his coach setting him down and say, hey, you're going to blow your ticket here. Stop being a jerk. And we're going to make sure you're not a jerk. They probably have. Sure but they, they, pro- have. they probably, sure sat, they probably that had that conversation with him more than once. But they, are, they also... At the, by now, should probably realize that they need to do more with this kid, and they need they need to to tighten the reins on him a little bit and see what they can do about getting some supervision for him. And whether whether that's just putting one of the seniors on him and saying, "All right, wherever wherever he goes, you go," and make sure he stays out of trouble. I don't know, but you know, I mean, basically, the kid needs a babysitter. And, still. Well, that's where also these you know these colleges have to understand their educational institutions. As well as they, sports machines, they you know, are. But you know, they're sports exactly. They're sports machines too. They know what's going on. They know this that guy helps bring in lots of money for the team, uh, the college, and the team itself. Exactly. So I mean, you know, that's part of it. I mean, that you know, it's, you you know, the coach should be standing up and saying, "Hey, stop being a jerk." That's the best thing to do. Really, if you think about it, I don't. I just that's just me, though. I don't know. What do really, I? the best thing for for Florida State could be when he leaves because he's not the headache anymore. Right, yeah. right. I mean, you know, hey, he's a great player and he's going to be a great player. But you know, I'm sure they'll recruit somebody else and just bring him in. And you know, look, it's a headache over our backs. Yeah. He, you know, we rode him as far they're, as we could. They're they're already recruiting that player. Because, exactly. I mean, I I could I could see Winston possibly leaving after this season. Depending on what else he gets into, what mm-hmm. what other what other issues? If there's another, I'll say serious issue before the end of this school year, I could see him leaving just because. All right, you and, know, and like you know, that leads you to be an NFL team that You have these immature kids who haven't put in full years and haven't been fully educated, and then they go out to the professional level where they're making mega millions, and they just don't handle. They don't know how to handle the success right. and the money, and that creates more problems. Yeah. And 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 some of those players, some of those players, their families get involved, and and whether that's good or bad. But I, you know, I've, I've seen numerous stories about, you know, mothers who have moved in with oh, their sons. Oh, there's the theme music. We uh, gotta get out of here, Tim. Oh, do we? We have time to leave. Uh, You've been listening to From the Press Box. I'm Rob Leonard. Joining me today is Tim Leonard, and our special co-host today Neil has Macio. been Neil Macchio. Thank you, Neil, for joining us. Rock and roll. Rock and roll, baby. Um, 
We'll see you uh, next next Monday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. right here on 90.3 FM, WHPC. WHPC.